Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to model activities. You remember that double clicking on a database opens up that database and shows you the activities. You can use the search function here to find whatever you're looking for. Let's say I'm looking for a steel data set, then I hit steel and I actually get quite a few data sets. So I, I might want to refine that a little bit. And let's say I want to have only extrusions feel. So let's do it like this. Here we go. So maybe that's not enough. Let's do it like this. And um, you can see now I have a list of all data sets in the Econment database or whatever database you're looking at uh, that contain these two keywords. You can switch uh, between different uh, search logic. You can use the slider here in the middle, by the way, to, to make more space. So if you want to have a look at the full activity name or the full product that these activities produce, you can do this here. You can look at the location. And you can also get the key, uh, which is a, a bright way thing. You, you can copy paste that and um, then use it in your code if you like. All right, so let's make this small again. So how can we see what's inside an activity? It's very simple, just like you did before with opening the database. You can also double click activities here and that will open up the activity details tab. In the activity details tab, you will find the description, the information relating to this process, the name, location, database. Uh, you can also click on this here to get a more detailed description. Um, you can uh, then below see the output of this activity, as well as the uh, technosphere flows and the biosphere flows. If that is too much information, you're only interested in one or the other, you can, you can toggle it off. Uh, you can also look at which other activities use the output of this activity. So if you look at the downstream consumers, there's also uncertainty information, which you can reveal by hitting the show uncertainty button. So how do we make a new activity? Let's better do that in a new database. So let's just say we make a new database. Let's call this a uh, test database. Uh, see, I have a new database here now with zero activities. Databases are actually protected from being manipulated. And, and that's quite nice because some databases you don't want to touch. So let's uncheck this here for the test database. And now we have more functionality here. Um, for example, we can add a new activity, power production, <clears throat> and this gives us an, an empty activity called power production. We need to actually hit the edit activity button, and that will allow us to change uh, all of the attributes here. It has by default now this output of power production, one unit. You, you can change the, the unit here. We can also add Technosphere flows. The only flows that we have available at this moment are from the Econment database. We can go back here actually, and, and let's just say we, we need some energy source for the power production. So let's take natural gas, natural gas high pressure. So let's just take any of these. It doesn't matter for the moment. And what we can do here is we can drag and drop this over and this will give us uh, an input of natural gas. Uh, and if we need a, I don't know if Econvent has a generator, um, it seems like it has one, so it also doesn't matter again. Let's just populate that with the generator. Let's say we need 0.3 cubic meters and a very, very small amount of this uh, generator. That's it. So. How do we add biosphere flows in the same way we we navigate to the biosphere? Let's look for uh, carbon dioxide. And here we go. We have a bunch of them uh, and we can drag that over and um, enter a number. And that's it. So that is basically how you can model activities. Uh, of course, if you want to model more activities from your foreground system, you would have to add more in this test database. So we could add a new activity here and um, call it steel production. The product of that, if I edit this, the product is steel. The thing that I want to show you is that we can now add that to power production. 
So we can take the steel here, it's still editable, the, the activity, and drag it in here. So now we've connected this in our foreground system. So we also have steel as an input. One really cool thing is that you can have a graphical view on this as well. So if we were to look at the power production, we could also um, right click this and say open in graph explorer. And this would give us the power production process that we just modeled and the three inputs that we uh, included. And you can use this graph explorer in, in uh, quite a, a lot of ways. Uh, you can find more information if you click the help button here. Um, but one simple thing you can do is you can just click on these activities and this one doesn't have any inputs. But if I go to the natural gas, for example, then it also tells me what the inputs to this process are. And that way I can uh, further navigate actually through the supply chain of these activities. That's it for now. So thanks guys for listening. Mm -hmm.